Photographing buildings simplified. How to edit photos of buildings. Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Nice to see you. I'm Rick McAvoy. Yes, I'm the person who photographs buildings. And this week on my on my blog and my YouTube channel, I'm continuing the theme of um, photographing buildings simplified, obviously. And, and this time I'm talking about the editing. Now, it's not telling you how to edit photos. No, I link you to something else where I tell you exactly how I edit my photos. This is more on the broader subject of the approach and just making it as simple as you can because any simplification we can do has to be a good thing, right? So here is my answery bit, as I like to call it. I edit photos of buildings using a logical, well-refined workflow. I sort through the photos and choose the photos that I'm going to edit. I only edit the photos I'm going to do something with. I edit the photos in Lightroom, starting with the crop and transform tools, working through the panels until I'm done. I export the photos out of Lightroom to issue to clients. Okay then, um, you might be surprised how little editing I do of my photos, because it's not, it's not what I do, I'm not into that. Um, most importantly, this is the next paragraph actually, I edit my photos to show buildings at the best. And even more importantly, at their realistic best. So if you only take one thing from this video and you only take one thing from this blog post, it's that you need to photograph and edit photos and show them at their realistic best. There, I said it. I mean, yeah, sure, you might want to do funky stuff and that's fine, but if you're doing work for clients or you want to faithfully reproduce buildings, reproduce even, then that's what you need to do, okay? And that's what I do and that's what I teach people how to do, okay? Who am I? Well, I'm professionally qualified in photography. I'm also professionally qualified in construction, which I don't know if it makes me unique, but I guess it must do, mustn't it? So I've been working in construction for years and I've been doing photography for even longer. And I'm talking a long time now. And these days, all I do is I photograph buildings, construction sites, architecture, real estate. And yeah, OK, I do the odd bit of sunrise and other nice stuff on holiday. But photographing buildings is what I do. So what do I edit my photos in? Well, I use Lightroom. Now, when I started getting into digital photography, that was in 2007, which I do believe is the year that Lightroom was released on the world. So it was perfect timing for me. So I started using Lightroom with version 1.0. Yep, I've been there from the very beginning. Okay, so Lightroom's my photo editing software of choice. <clears throat> Excuse me. I also use Photoshop to remove things, but less and less though so now there's some new funky tools in Lightroom and being in England and our weather being rubbish I have to use Luminar to replace the skies without any horrible masking complications Complif complications oh, I was right the first time wasn't it okay so one great way to simplify the editing of your photos of buildings is this and it's nothing to do with editing take less photos if you've got less photos, you've got less dilemmas about which photo to edit and it makes life so much easier. And if you go out taking photos with the conscious aim of taking less, do you know what happens, or this is certainly what happened to me, my photos got better because I had to concentrate more on what I was doing and that was principally concentrating on the composition. So it made my photos better and I take less, so I've got less to sort out Less of that horrible, oh, three very similar photos. I used to take loads of photos, one from here, one from here, one from here, one from here. And I'd be looking at them in Lightroom and I couldn't work out which one to do. Now I just take the one with the correct, with the best composition I can get. Take the one photo, get it technically correct, as correct as I can do, and edit that one. So that's a very good time-saving tip. In, in editing photos, take less photos, less photos to work with. So I only edit the photos I'm going to do something with, as in put on my website, write a blog post for, issue to a client. So 
all the other photos that I take, and there aren't that many generally, I don't do anything with them. If I'm on a really efficient, brutal day, I'll delete them. Because once I've edited a set of photos for, say, a client shoot, I've never had to go back and find another photo and edit it because I've always got the job done. So don't edit stuff straight... Sorry, don't delete stuff straight away if you're getting new to this. Get some confidence. You can always go back later on and delete stuff, okay? Things I want to talk about. Well, I didn't go into my Lightroom workflow in this post, but I did link you to a post titled Lightroom Workflow 2022, How to Work Like a Pro Like Me. Snappy title, see what I did there. <clears throat> and in that post, I take you through my Lightroom workflow from beginning to end, as in taking the photo, getting the memory card and putting it in the computer, all the way to exporting out of Lightroom to issue to whoever you want. So that's a blog post, there's a link in the blog post to it. I would put a link on this YouTube video, but I don't know how to do them. That's a disappointment, isn't it? Okay, so there's a, a few other things that I talk about. I mean, I use import presets. I take photos using auto bracketing. Technical correctness is very important. First thing I do with photos is I get them straight, horizontal, and the correct proportions, um, no, no distortion or anything. They've got to look correct first. And that's what I start with. Technically correct and cropped how I want them. And then I'll do the rest of the processing. My phone's ringing. It would do, wouldn't it? Okay, so why do I do this? Well, it's a more efficient way of working. I'll just stop that, excuse me. It's a more efficient way of working and I do this to get consistently high quality photos. Realism. The photos I take are for clients, and if they're not for clients, they're examples of building photography. So I want them to be accurate, I want them to be realistic, I want them to look like the building. I don't do any of this exaggerating of stuff. What I'm showing you is realistic photos of buildings at the best. Technical correctness. So important, I mentioned it twice. Now, I might have forgotten that I've mentioned it once, but I'll keep on saying it. Get the buildings technically correct first, and there's a little trick there which I will share with you. Get your building ramrod straight in Lightroom, or whatever software you use, and then just come back, ease back on the verticality a bit, so you've got a little bit of a lean, because it looks more natural then, because we don't, we tend to look up at buildings, we're not looking level with them, and it, it looks a little bit artificial. You know, you see buildings perfectly straight. I mean, they're technically correct. That's how the building has been built. Well, you'd hope so anyway. <laughs> but it looks a little bit artificial. So I always give it a little bit of a lean back. Like the bacon. Sorry. <laughs> um, Lightroom Mobile, quick one there. Because what I do on every blog post is I, I ask the question, whatever I've been writing about, what if I use a mobile phone? How does this apply to me? Well, I tell you in this post, and, and I also introduced Lightroom Mobile, which is brilliant. And that's um, Lightroom Mobile is how you bridge a PC and, and a phone. And I mean, we're going from Windows to Apple using Lightroom Mobile. It's brilliant. They can go backwards either way. Right. What else? Phone or camera? Yeah, cover that. I think that's it, really. Um, check out the blog post, rickmacavoyphotography.com. While you're on my website, there's lots of ways to get in touch. You can subscribe so you get a weekly email from me. Yes, really, I send a weekly email out on something normally building photography related. Also, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? Well, you're on it now, so why not? There's a video that comes out once a week. There'll be a little break coming up for Christmas probably to spare everybody. But once a week with my blog, there's a video that comes out. And lastly, and by no means least... The Photography Explained podcast. This is my audio offering in explaining photography stuff one thing at a time in plain English in less than 27 minutes ish without the irrelevant details. Available on all good podcast providers and it also has its own website, photographyexplainedpodcast.com. Yeah, that's all my stuff. Okay, I'm done there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I hopefully you'll see me on another video. Cheers from me, Rick. <laughs>